heist in terms of trying to get us to, go, to get to the places that we're trying to go. So this ball game is a tremendous impact on the future of our, our program. George Pugh and our coach's quote brought to you by Amtrak with over 500 destinations nationwide for you to choose from. And his team leading 7-6 over Grambling State University with 12.04 left here in the first half. That last drive, an 82-yarder. Six plays, a minute 59 off the clock, and the longest pass completion of the year for Burris. Of course, Jake Reed ran about 30 yards of that uh, 53 yards after the catch. Here's the kickoff. Anthony Thomas. Oh. Got to get to the corner. Knocked out of bounds. Right at the 40-yard line. Coach, Good return by Anthony Thomas. He's tired, he's tired plus he got a, a helmet right from the sternum. Charles McNeil with John Stallworth, the great from Alabama a &M. Thank you very much, Charlie. It's a pleasure to be alongside of John Stallworth. Of course, two-time Steeler, most valuable player. And John, what are you up to these days? Well, we're back in Huntsville, Alabama. Um, Alabama a and home campus is there, and uh, we have an engineer from there. And of course, you've got to be very pleased with the outcome of the first quarter thus far. And of course, into the second quarter, your team has a lead. Well, we have a lead. We've been playing too much on that end of the field, though. We need to get out on the other end of the field so we can score some points. But uh, it's been good for us. Uh, defense is playing extremely well. Let's go back up to Charlie, Lim, and Doug. <laughs> all right, Charles McNeil. John Stallworth, of course. Barry Wagner broke all of Stallworth's uh, school rush, uh, pa pass receiving records a year ago. Barry Wagner no longer a member of the Alabama A&M squad. And, of course, uh, they have some great receivers there now. Maurice Houston, Anthony Walker, and Anthony Thomas. And a little man shaking up for Grambling. Tony Walker. It's Tony Walker, a defensive back. No, that's seven. That's Stephen Cole, defensive back. I'm looking at seven. Cole. That's like in that hamstring yeah. area. Yeah, hamstring, right. That Here's was a 34-yard return by... What a clip. 33-yard return by uh, Anthony Thomas. He's got avoidability and escapability. <laughs> he does a great job here. Nifty moves, good blocks, trying to get back cross green here. He's finally run out of bounds by Andrew Hart. And then he gets hit out of bounds. And that's he gets what <laughs> Coach Pugh... Was, uh, Derek Levy, the man who kicked the ball off. Is the man who made the, the last tackle. But at the 40-yard line is where Alabama A&M will go to work with 11.51 remaining here in the second quarter. Alabama A&M leading, Grambling 7-6. Alabama A&M lost their first game 25 to nothing to North Alabama and then lost to Jacksonville State 27-7. They won their last three, 38-14 over Knoxville, 37-25 over Savannah State, and they beat Miles last week, 56-6. Tracy Kendall threw five touchdown passes, ran for a touchdown, and also caught a touchdown pass. On the handoff, they keep the ball on the ground, a yard gain, and that's all for the running back, Terrence, uh, make that Reginald Leslie before the stop was made by Henry, Henry Blaze, the senior out of Decatur, <laughs> Georgia, Southwest DeKalb. Checking on another. Well, Morgan State, they may never win a game this year. Two to nothing. Who's coaching it? Keep your head up, Ed. <laughs> Here's Ben Vereen in the stadium today. This Circle City Classic has a lot of celebrities come through. One Second of, and ten. One of the many grand marshals in the parade. Kendall did not get away. Lucius. Robert Jenkins. I'm sorry. Uh, Pinckney. Number 74. Sack. A loss of 13 back to the 32-yard line. It's one of the best I should say eight. Loss of eight. Loss of eight yards back to the 32-yard line. It sure is a great defense, isn't it? That's the best defense in all defense. I've seen the best of them. They can't throw it sitting down. It's harder to complete them on your back. Oh, yes, it is. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Not too often, you know. <laughs> Straight ahead. They run it with Leslie on the third down. They're playing it safe. It was third and 18. And they'll wind up punting it away. Henry Blaze makes two cut downs in that uh, series. Three downs and out. It's almost like Arthur Murray, the last few possessions for Alabama and him. One, two, three, kick. 
And again, William Garth back to punt it away. Just gets it away. Great hit. Armstead back inside the 18. Stopped at the 25. Return of about seven yards after a 50-yard punt by Garth. Timeout on the field, 9.51 remaining. 7-6. A&M over Gramley. Another muffin? No, our juice. Oh. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, you're missing an exciting ball game, the yeah. 7th Annual Circle City Classic. And joining me right now is Ben Vereen. And Ben, what brings you out today? Uh, well, I had the opportunity of singing National Anthem and being here for the Circle at uh, the Classic. And this is really exciting. Is this, is this a black thing? It's a black thing for okay, sure. Okay, yeah, this is really a black thing. This is hot. I mean, we are partying here. And the people and the city is just bubbling with joy. And the people are elegantly looking fabulous. I mean, it's just, I'm excited, man. And my two favorite teams are on the field. Let's go back upstairs. All right, Charles K. Frank Brown making a great stop. A loss of five yards on the running back, Walter Dean, on the pitch. And they just let the linebacker through. Five yards on a Dean doing what he does best. He leads his team in overall tackles, overall tackles here in the 90 uh, campaign. And again, showing some great speed, great down the line pursuit, and comes up with a five yard loss on the tackle. Second leading tackler in the SIAC out of Brighton, Alabama. He was a second team all conference player a year ago. And it is a second and 15 for the Tigers. Jake Reed comes out wide to the right side. Back to pass is Burris on second down, throws it up. Incomplete. I'll tell you, that defensive back came close to a little interference on there, didn't he? Indeed. Trying to cover Osborne Christian, the senior, out of Fair Oaks, California. i tell you what Burns is not doing. He's not stepping forward throwing the football. Everything he throws the football, he's, he's off his he's, back. Yeah, he's, he's leaning back, and you can't get anything on the football. I'm sure Eddie would like to have you down there coaching him, wouldn't he? Derek, <laughs> Derek McFarren, number three there in the coverage. Barely got his hands back, almost interference. But again, good play, brings up a third down and almost 15. With 9.01 left in the second quarter. Charlie Neal, Lim Barney, Doug Williams, Charles Cady, our sideline reporter today for this one. And now a timeout being called, and Grambling will spend its second one. So both teams have one timeout left here in the second quarter of play. That one spent to say from keep from getting the penalty because the clock, the 25 second clock, had ran down. Well, of course, you know we talked to Coach George Pugh earlier, and of course, anytime you talk to Eddie Robinson, he always has some some great things to say, and we got a chance to spend some time with him yesterday at practice. And, of course, he even had you uh, talking to the team, Doug. Let's see what he had to say about this game. The key to winning is execution offensively and defensively. If we execute offensively, the manner in which we have, well, uh, we could win. And if we do it defensively, the whole key in my whole career has been execution. And I think that's the important thing. We got the people. Eddie Robinson, coach's quote brought to you by Amtrak with over 500 destinations nationwide for you to choose from. He definitely didn't say anything different, Charlie. Execution. <laughs> he believes in execution. Well, that's what's going to either win or lose ball game for you. It's the same key to life. Execution. Yes, sir. 5P principles. Proper preparation prevents poor performance. <laughs> Tracy Kendall along the sideline. Over 1,100 yards rush, uh, passing this year. And now another penalty flag is dropped. Does this delay a game again? What is this one? Well, the back judge dropped it way back here. They can't call a delay a game because they hadn't put the ball in play. Yeah, that's <laughs> a timeout. No, I don't, think they call, I don't think they call a penalty. I think they had to push the 25-second clock back up to the, to the top. I don't think it's against the Grambling Tigers because they had called a timeout, so 25-second clock would not start. Now it starts. 
Big third down here for Alabama a &M. Third. And a third, big third down for Grambling, too. Third and 15. Back to pass is Burris. Jake Reed is the intended receiver. He has it. Oh, great play. First I, down at the 37-yard line. I tell you what, that was a yards. gutsy throw by the quarterback because if that defensive back had a turn down, turn around a split second earlier, he could have picked that football off. Here he is. Double coverage again. Cleveland Crutcher and Ron, Roderick Isaac here teaming up, but again to no avail. Jake Reed comes up with a big third down and 15 reception. Ball at the 37-yard line. There's the stats on him coming into the game. 16 receptions, averaging 29 yards per catch. And now the misdirection, they go back to Brown inside on the counter. Davis, rather. How often have we seen them run that play? Tremaine Johnson. I mean, you can go down the list of guys who ran that counter. Charlie misdirection, Jordan. right? I can tell you what it is. The old 26 counter. It's coming all the time, but Jay, you got to be prepared to yeah. stop it. And you know what, Charlie? They also have a, a, a deep pass off of the same type of action in the backfield. And as a defender, if you get caught up looking at that action, the man is behind you before you know it. Hey, this offense, every running play that you see, there's a pass off of. Coach Robbins believes in keeping things in series. Counters. Seven Depends. yards on that one. It is second and three at the 44-yard line. Yes. And they come back straight up the middle this time with Dean on the carry, but not much happening. He, in fact, lost a couple of yards. Back to the 41-yard line. Loss of three. It'll be third down, and we'll call it seven. Bruce Craig on the stop, number 96. Good defensive play. Playing it where you should play defense on the other side of the line of scrimmage. Penetration. One of their keys to winning was control of the line of scrimmage. Got a blitz going. Interference. Yeah, but that was an uncatchable pass. He, I wouldn't, don't, have, he wouldn't have caught that anyhow. Well, it was in his, in his reach, though. If the guy hadn't have been on his back, he probably could have jumped a little higher. And the ironic thing. <laughs> <laughs> what, hey, what school did you go to, Doug? I went to Alabama a &M. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, you get a chance to see the guilty culprit, number 36, Cleveland Crutcher. Again, just being a little antsy here. It was a catching distance. Okay, if you say so. You know, you prejudice offensive players. Give are. me one, Charlie. Just give me this one, okay? <laughs> <laughs> It'll be a first down for Grambling over the midfield strike into Alabama A&M territory at the 49. Defensive pass interference. Automatic first down. At the 49 of Alabama A&M with 718 left in the first half. 7-6 to six is our score. Alabama A&M struck first on a 43-yard run by the quarterback, Tracy Kendall. Sean Burris then came back with a 53-yard touchdown strike to Jake Reed. The extra point was missed by Grambling, and it's a 7-6 ball game. Throws it out to Tyrone Davis, reverses his field, has some blocking, and picks up about four yards after all of that to about the 46-yard line. Now marking at about the 45. That almost looked like it was an intended screen, but it wasn't. <laughs> what it was, what it was, you notice that the offensive lines are out, the linemen are out there to block. It's a screen, or you could throw it down the field. They didn't go across the ball because they didn't want an uh, ineligible receiver downfield. Understand it. But the quarterback made a good decision. His, his, he wasn't open downfield. His first Let's choice was downfield, but he had ended up going to a secondary receiver. Bruce Craig almost got to the quarterback just before he got that one away. It is second down. Here we go again. Tyrone Davis turning the corner. Not much. Derek Ned, actually. Defense changed his mind. Yeah. <laughs> Derek Ned, I'm sorry, on the uh, on the run, number 31. And he takes it down to the 43-yard line. And it'll bring up a third down and four. Pretty much a defensive struggle here early going. First half, six minutes, seven seconds remaining in the second quarter. Grambling trailing by a point over Alabama A&M, 7 to 6. Quick drop to Jake Reed. He has the first down, still on his feet, but stepped out of bounds. Too soft by the corner. But he has the first down inside the 40 to about the 37-yard line of Alabama A&M. 
the defensive tackle on that particular play, number 17, Dick Taylor. Alabama a &M is Taylor. They're taking out Roderick Isaac. Brought in Richard Taylor. Sean Burris has seemed to collected some of his confidence in throwing. Back to pass on first down. Burris throws it deep. Has Jake Reed. He has first it down, Jake run. Reed. And they got a call interference on somebody. Maybe face that. mask. Defensive interference, but it's a catch. It's not a touchdown. I don't know, Lim. It's not a touchdown. Watch where you land, Lim. Come it's on. It's not a touchdown. Well, well, they can't mark it there anyhow. They have... 36 defensive yards. Let's see what happens. Look like defensive interference against uh, number 24, Dick Taylor. Clear reception. Clear reception to Dick Reed. I mean to uh, Jake Reed. Who toppled down right around the one yard line. Okay, I'll take it there. Yeah, no, you were first and goal. You got four downs to get into the end. Yeah, but you remember that great defensive stand early in the first quarter. Yes. That's why I'm trying to get in the end zone before we get there. <laughs> first down. Alabama State, Alabama a and would need another one of those great defensive stands. Well, the pass was caught. The penalty was declined. And, of course, they'll take the ball at the one-yard line. Again, cornerback number 24 looking in the backfield. Walter Dean on the run around the right side for his ninth rushing touchdown of the year. One yard out. He makes it look easy. And Grambling goes out in front 12-7. to seven. Would offensive line help to make it look a little easier, Charlie? Nobody was over there but white shirts. Here's a touchdown again. It looks this way coming into your living room. You're on the couch. Watch your beer. <laughs> 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 this was a 75-yard drive. They missed the last point after by Derek Levy. This one is up, and it is good. So Gramlin goes out in front, 13-7, 5-32 remaining in the second quarter. We're in Indianapolis, Circle City Classic, and we'll be back. And suppositories. Charlie Neal along with Doug Williams, Lim Barney here. Hi, Poopy. Glad to <laughs> you could be with us for this Circle City Classic. Don't forget our halftime showtime. The bands from both of these fine institutions, Alabama AM and Grambling State University. Plus, we'll have our Toyota Sports Line. We'll be talking to Reggie Williams, former linebacker with the Cincinnati Bengals. We'll have scores of some other games and some other surprises for you, so stay with us here at halftime as Derek Levy ties his leg up so he can kick it, keep keep him bending that foot back. Huh? Well, I gotta give him a cramp or something. <laughs> I'll tie it up like that. It works. <laughs> he got a deep one off. In one yard deep in the end zone, coming out with it. Anthony Thomas. Thomas still on his feet. Thomas spinning up to the 40 yard line. 40 yard return by Anthony Thomas. Anthony Thomas, I'll tell you, very dangerous on the return, averaging 22 yards, a kickoff return coming in. Gets a 40-yard of that time as we look at the last scoring drive by the Grambling Tigers, 75 yards. 10 plays, 419 off the clock, culminated with a one-yard run by Walter Dean. And the big key play in that drive was that 36-yard pass to Jake Reed that took him to the one-yard line. Pitch back. Not much happening. And the quarterback, Tracy Kendall, really, really paid the price that particular time by Kerry Brown after he pitched it on the option. So I like to say a special hello to Miss Dew down in Moss Point, Mississippi. Yeah, that's Miss Dew. Ms. That's Felina's mother. Oh. Down in Moss Point, mom. Mississippi. Hi, Mom, down on the coast. Hi, Mom, on the coast. Watch this hit. Ooh. After he Lights pitched out. the ball lights out. Boy, that changed quarterback's mind there. Yeah. Second and ten. No gain on the play. Back to pass. Tracy Kendall oh, steps up and gets about seven, eight yards up to the 48-yard line. Gutsy run by this young man who's virtually the leading ground gainer thus far in the game on two scampers. Quarterback option. One for a touchdown. 43 yards. And 
Then another 30 yard on an option. Tracy Kendall second in the conference in the SIAC. In total offense, Thomas Griffin made the stop after the eight yard gain. It'll be third and two with 420 remaining here in the first half. Big third down and two for Alabama a and In order to keep the ball going, you need to convert third downs, possession downs. Kendall back to pass under pressure, just throws it out of bounds. Smart play. I don't know about I don't know about the play selection. Though. But it was smart. He did a great job of getting, oh, yeah, getting, getting rid of the ball, ball yeah. for sure. I mean, don't, don't take selection. the big loss. Don't take the sack and don't risk the interception. Garth is in there to punt it away. Two yards out of going with what, what, what you can go That's with Buck best. Buckby Cannon. Buck Buchanan, and along with Sinclair, who played with Mike Sinclair. Mm -hmm. Buck Sinclair. Buchanan, uh, of course, the Kansas City Chiefs are in here. And uh, he played a long time with the Chiefs. Hunter, Bill Garth. It's a good one. Armstead back to field it. But it takes a bounce. And now it takes... And a grambling bounce. bounce. Get on it. They lost about eight yards on that one. It started bouncing at about the 18, and it winds up at the 27. So that's where grambling will go to work after a 25-yard punt. That's all it winds up to be with 3.56 remaining. First down and 10, but we may have a penalty. Let's see what happens. Robinson and it's against Alabama A&M. Now let's see if, if Grambling's going to take the ball or if they're going to have him punt it over. Well, they're going to have it punt it over. Ooh, that's a bad decision, I think. Oh, let's hope it don't hunt them because <laughs> I think I would have took the football. No don't take a those butts, those those bounces don't <laughs> don't happen like that too often. Oh, really. I thought they had a good bounce. The Unless they're the trying to set up. The run back. That's the, only, that's the only reason I can see them making yeah, a point. Still would have taken the ball right there. Armstead is averaging 39 yards per punt return. He has a touchdown of 72 yards. He's only returned a couple coming into the game. Now face the Alabama and inbound. Get on the ball, coach. There you go. Bad decision. Bad decision. <laughs> At the two-yard line, a three. As that's where Grambling will go to work. First down and ten as William Garth, the punter, comes up with a 55-yarder. They'll mark it at the three, and that's where Grambling will go to work with 3.46 remaining. First half of play. We'll be back. Play. Full speed ahead. You Well, of course, Grambling had a chance to have the ball at about the 27-yard line, but decided to, to have Alabama A&M punt it over, and this is what happened. Well, as in life, uh, there are good decisions made and there are bad decisions made. In this football game, this was certainly a bad decision on the part of Grambling. Bernard Berry, who also does the kicking off for Alabama A&M, was the man down there on the special teams, the down at the three. First and ten, Walter Dean straight into the line. Nothing happening. Offensively for Grambling. This is Grambling's deepest point of starting thus far. Certainly is. Wall. Now at their own three, they've started at their own 40. The Alabama A&M 35, the Alabama A&M 36, their own 46, 18, 25, and three. And look at the time of possession. Almost seven minutes as a differential between Grambling and Alabama A&M. Second down. They gained a half a yard on that one. It'll be second and about nine. Some kind of rollout pass here to get away from the rush. <laughs> I didn't mean to call it like that. Wide open to tight end, <laughs> and it's complete to Osborne Christian. About the 27-yard line, first and 10, Grambling. When you see him in tight like that, in a situation like that, the only way they're going to throw the football, if it's not a play action, they're going to roll out, and that's what happened. Cleveland Crothers has had a busy day all afternoon, beginning with the first pass that Glamman threw was right at him. Here he is now, being beaten by the tight end for big yardage. They had him down deep in their own territory. they got a lot of breathing room now. Ball at the 27-yard line. First and 10 for the men of GSU. 24-yard gain. Some of the Chiefs in town. To play the Colts tomorrow Heath. at the game. Heath. The quarterback. There's no glass in college. Will be sacked. 
There's no grass rule in college. Big number 87 defensively for Alabama A&M. Comes through Todd Woolard, the linebacker, who was a converted tight end. And Woolard now with his second sack of the day. Tenth sack coming in, uh, into the season. Here he is. Good job. Came through virtually untouched. Moves the ball all the way back inside the 15 to the 14-yard line. It'll be second and 23. Loss of 13 on the play. I saw the linemen standing up looking at each other. He's trying to figure out what happened. Hey, he got through. That's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> no blocking. <Yeah. laughs> on the draw play, Dean. Not much happening. Dean of about one. To the 15, and then that's it. About one yard and... Now, oh, Alabama one? A&M will use its last timeout as Chambers picks up his third tackle. A minute and 42 remaining in the first half, and Alabama A&M uses its last timeout. I'll tell you, they've, you've got to give them a lot of credit. They've hung in there. If they could just get some offense going with that passing game, it could be trouble. Alabama A&M has done a great job, but I'm telling you, Grambling has always been a tradition team where if you stay with them to the first half, and if you can th stay with them through the third quarter, you got a good opportunity to beat them. But nine out of ten, a lot of times, their talent, the big men, usually the way the other team down. Well, you know what's so funny? Grambling came into the game outscoring their opponent 57 to nothing in the first quarter. They did not score a point in the first quarter of this particular game. They've scored the least amount of points in the second half. But a lot of that has to do is because they've had big leads on teams. And they put a lot, put a lot of people on the sideline to get them ready. They certainly do. Now, Alabama A&M, consequently, has scored most of this point in the third quarter. So this may be the second half game we see as far as Alabama A&M is concerned. It's going to be interesting. Councilman so is in the booth. Councilman Reggie. Uh, we'll be talking to him at halftime. Reggie He's Williams. Okay. Don Bird. There's the stats on him. 10 of 19. 194 yards. No touchdowns in this particular contest. He came in with a 40... 1% completion ratio. It is third down. 22 yards to go for Gramley. He has Dean split behind him, along with Butcher. Throws it deep. Has a man out there incomplete. Stephen Grant, the intended receiver at the 40-yard line. He hung the body out there. Great just throw. couldn't hold on. And Great throw. Uh, I'll tell you, you really aired that one out, did he? Burris yes. does have an arm. He has a decent arm. A lot better than he has to be control. a little more consistent. The thing he has to learn to do, Charlie, is keep his feet on the ground, gain some confidence. Here it is. Look, here's a good throw here. He used good mechanics, good fundamental principles, and he airs it out. Perfectly timed. Receiver just couldn't grasp it. He did WBIH at watch ball in hand. <laughs> That's a tough catch anyhow. <laughs> yeah, but you got to come up with him, Charlie, when he hits your hand. That's where he's getting the meal ticket to do. Low snap. Right gets it off. It's being chased by Maurice Houston, and he runs out of bounds to at fight the field. Day. <laughs> <laughs> to live to fight another day. Good job. He had a trained killer bearing down on him. 42-yard punt by Wright. So they get the ball at midfield. First down and 10. Alabama a &M will go to work. Their drives have started at their own 30. Their first one resulted in a touchdown. The 1, the 1, the 20, the 3, the 40, the 40. This is the best field position they started today. Kendall lets it go incomplete. And he was hit as he tried to get it to Pat Lee, the intended receiver number 8. Sophomore out of Decatur, Georgia. But again, the pressure was put on him defensively by Robert Jenkins. Quarterback cannot make a living on that turf. <laughs> you know, don't you? Yeah. And don't complete no passes yeah, yeah. off the turf. Well, you know, it's a little better when you hit the turf and you complete the pass. Yeah. And when you don't complete that pass, that turf hurts just a little bit more. Yeah, it's got a hard base underneath. And unlike the natural earth, the natural earth to give. And you get a chance to slide. But once you hit the turf, you absorb the whole shock. Kendall, they read the option that time. He may have fumbled the ball a little bit on second down and 10. Back to the line of scrimmage. It'll bring up a third and 10. Last suit around the collar then by number 45, 
Thomas Griffin, middle linebacker for Grambling State University. Ball barely getting back to the line of scrimmage. Maybe a couple inches lost on the plate. There he is, Tracy Kendall, leader of this Bulldog offense, engineering major. Under a minute to go, first half of play, third and ten, Alabama A&M. Grambling has one timeout left, Alabama A&M none. We don't have, we don't have any timeout. There's a penalty. The There's clock was going to run out. Either way, he may as well take the penalty. He can't call a timeout because he has none left. I'm sure Grambling proposed a different defense to him from the play that was selected. He was trying to buy time as he's looking at the 25-second clock rundown. Delay of game. Yeah, with no timeouts left, you just have to take the penalty. You're going to do something. I tell you what, the Grambling coaches are next to us, and that's all they was hollering. They don't have any more timeouts. Offensive team, still third down. As I mentioned, Grambling has one remaining. 13 to 7 is our score here. Grambling ahead. The penalties. Alabama and m has been penalized eight times in this game so far. Grambling only once. Tracy Kendall, flag, probably holding. Offensive holding. And it'll bring up a fourth down that'll probably be declined by the Grambling Tigers. He can't look. He's been lassoed around the neck two plays in I'll succession. You, but I'll tell you, I think that Tracy Kendall, as good as he was a year ago, is much better as, a, as an athlete this year. He well, had an extra year of season, Charlie. In fact, you know, he he has given Grambling the blues on the ground last year, <laughs> and their loss, he ran, more, he ran a touchdown in for 75 yards. So they know his capability. In he, fact, uh, last week against Miles, he passed uh, for touchdowns of 31, 67, 7, 15, and 26 yards. 417 yards. Let's see what happened here on the on the tackle. That's Maybe a face man. Maybe that's what the penalty was. It was a face man. It wasn't holding. Yeah. That's why the neck's a little sore. It's a yeah. five-yard penalty. Still third down. So it's only a five-yard penalty. Doesn't give him an automatic first down, but it gives him another life. <laughs> third and eight. I think that's crazy. He can get a broke neck for five yards and it's still not <laughs> enough for first down. 28 <laughs> seconds remaining. He's going to have to air it out. Maybe a Hail Mary. <laughs> yeah, that's cold, but that's it, though. <laughs> Buying time. Steps up. First down. No, nope, close. Close. Horseshoes. But they can't stop the clock. That's the problem. Closest only counts in horseshoes, hand grenades, and slow dancing. Oh, millionaire. <laughs> <laughs> a billionaire. Let's take it to the top. That's the end of the first half. They go to the locker room. Grambling. They're on top, but they've been in a battle. They're trying to win the war. We'll be back with our halftime showtime. Toyota Sports Line. Stay with us. Okay, we're here at halftime now, just to bring up some halftime highlights here in the seventh annual Circle City Classic featuring Glamour State, Louisiana, as well as uh, Alabama A&M. Get a chance to look at our first half highlights. First play of possession for the Alabama a and Bulldogs. It's uh, the quarterback who's led by Tracy Kendall on an option play. Good job here. He throws the whole defense, defensive back bit on the pitch, and it's off to the races. He outlegs number nine, Julius Irving, to get it in for the first, first score. 43-yard scamper by quarterback Tracy Kendall who's an electrical engineer, and he did shock the bipartisan crowd here. Second score of the game comes as Gramlin tosses a nice pass here to the favorite receiver, and he outlegs the defense. Jake Green takes it into the end zone. The PAT was missed here, and Gramlin trailed by six points, six to seven. Gramlin's very next possession following an uh, interference penalty. It's a toss to Heisman hopeful Walter Dean who gets it into the end zone. And now Gramlin leads 13 to seven as we're still here at halftime awaiting the showtime at halftime.
We are experiencing technical difficulties. Please stand by. We are experiencing technical difficulties. Please stand by. We are experiencing technical difficulties. Please stand by. with one of those cement bricks. What's <laughs> here?
Sure. 
Traveling State University marching band under the direction of Conrad Hutchinson. We're at the Circle City Classic. It's halftime. Grambling leading Alabama A&M 13 to 7. Reggie, you've got to love what you're seeing out there. Reggie Williams, former linebacker with the Cincinnati Bengals, now a city councilman in the city of Cincinnati. How you doing, Charlie? Boy, this is really an exciting halftime. I tell you, the game was something, but halftime is something else. I know you're loving it. What are you doing with yourself? You got some baseball cards in your hand. You're not just doing everything down in City Hall, right? No, not at all, Charlie. Um, I'm working on a project to try to harness some of the enthusiasm and excitement that surrounds sports, especially football, and trying to take some of the heroes that you find in the NFL team and work with pro set in the NFL, trying to put some educational and academic materials on the back of some of these cars to give the kids to motivate them in school. Well, it sounds great. Let's talk about another thing, Cincinnati Bengals. A lot of controversy about women in the locker room. Your ex-coach, Sam White, fined 30 grand this week by the commissioner of the NFL, Paul Tagliabue, because he did not allow a woman in the locker room. Your feelings about that as a former professional athlete? Well, this is a very serious situation that Commissioner Tagliabue is having to take a strong stand, and I have to support the commissioner because, really, this is an issue of equal access and equal opportunity for all people, if you're qualified. And I think that while we can all work together to address some of the concerns about privacy in the locker room, there's definitely should be some room for compromise if we don't have to have an either-or situation. If you're qualified, whether you're a woman, a minority, or a person with a disability, you should have an opportunity to do your job. What do you think of your coach, though? Was he like that when you were playing? I mean... Uh, Sam is a pretty opinionated person. He does a lot of good things. He works uh, during the off-season with the homeless. He's really a positive role model in that respect. He's a competitor to the nth degree. But sometimes he gets very focused on his own domain. He's got to understand that what he does is going to have an impact on the whole game and on the whole situation of civil rights. When you talk about the Cincinnati Bengals, you happy with what they're doing this year? Well, I'm happy they're 3-1. and one. I think that they have an opportunity to really be the toast of the AFC Central, primarily because Houston, Pittsburgh, and Cleveland aren't playing that well. But it's a long year, and if they can stay injury-free, I think the Bengals will be in the playoffs. All right, the Alabama a &M marching band out on the field. Reggie Williams, thank you so much. Good luck with the baseball cards and uh, continued success in your role in the city council. Likewise, you're a great role model, Charlie. Keep up the great work. All right, thank you so much, Reggie Williams. We're at halftime here at the Circle City Classic. Down on the field, the Alabama a and State University marching band. Let's go down to them right now. They're under the direction of Mr. Arthur Wesley. 11 years at A&M, and the dance group will call the Maroonettes.
University Marching Band. And this halftime band's showtime has been brought to you by the Florida Orange Growers. Florida quality orange juice. It makes you feel so good. Halftime Sports Line is being brought to you by your Toyota dealer and Toyota's quality line of 1990 cars and trucks. Toyota, a heritage of reliability. Toyota, I love what you do for me. The Toyota Black Sports Trivia Question, brought to you by your Toyota dealer and their quality line of cars and trucks. Toyota, I love what you do for me. Who is currently the only black head coach in the NFL?
I'm happy. Art Shell, head coach for the Los Angeles Raiders, was appointed mid-season 1989. I would do it because you feel that you told me if you hired me, so you're not just a black coach. You're a Raider coach for most of all, as far as we're concerned. You're a Raider. And being a Raider, I think you're ready now to lead our football team. That's why I'm hiring you. This sports trivia question has been brought to you by your Toyota dealer and Toyota's quality line of 1990 cars and trucks. Toyota, a heritage of reliability. Toyota, I love what you do for me. Welcome back. We're at halftime, 13-7, grounding on top of Alabama A&M. You know, for the third straight year, Toyota and BET have formed a marriage to recognize outstanding student-athletes, not only for their accomplishments on the gridiron, but their accomplishments in the classroom and in the community as well. And we, I spent some time recently with George Borst of Toyota Motor Sales USA. BET is proud once again to be involved with the Toyota Leadership Award program. And George, it's good seeing you once again. Maybe you can tell our viewers a little bit about the award and why Toyota established it. Well, thanks, Charlie. It's great to be back here on BET. Toyota established this award to recognize the hard work and dedication that these athletes show every week on the field and additionally recognize the academic accomplishments that these individuals have shown. Some of these players do even more. That's right, and that's what makes this award really special, Charlie. Some of these players give back to the community. In addition to all the time constraints on athletics and academics, they go into the community and they give back to those a little less fortunate than themselves. We think that's really special, and we think it deserves a special award. Some of the people we recognized last year was the wide receiver Elliot Searcy from Southern University, defensive back Vince Buck from Central State University, and our overall leader, quarterback Tracy Kendall from Alabama A&M. And with uh, leaders like those, the decisions get very, very tough. How are the selections made? Well, it is a tough decision, and fortunately, we at Toyota don't have to make that decision. Those decisions are made by the coaching staffs and the academic faculties of those teams that compete on BET telecasts. And they tell us each week who those special individuals are that are going to be recognized on BET telecasts. And the players aren't the only ones to benefit from this, right? No, they're not. The school benefits as well. Because Toyota donates a check for $1,000 to that school's general scholarship fund. And in addition, at the end of the year, we select the Toyota Leader of the Year Award. And that school gets $10,000 in that individual's name for their school's general scholarship fund. So you not only recognize the athlete's accomplishments, but you also set aside some money for future students as far as those who need financial assistance. That's right, Charlie. It's not about money. It's about the special hard work and dedication that these individuals show week after week and the recognition that we feel they deserve. And the money is used to help some other students get educations at those schools. We think it's a special award, and we're happy to be part of it. Well, it looks like Toyota's in for another winning season. We'd like to thank you for joining us here today. Well, thank you very much, and we, we're sure BEP is going to have a great season, too. Thank you. And we'd like to recognize our two Toyota Leadership Award winners from today's game. First of all, from Alabama A&M, our overall winner from a year ago, quarterback Tracy Kendall. A 3.89 grade point average in electrical engineering. His community service includes visitor and lecturer, the Limestone Correctional Institute, Children's Home, Wood Pine Nursing Home, Children's Hospital in Atlanta. Also, from Grambling State University, Ivinsky Davis. He has a 3.70 grade point average in political science. Ivinsky's community service includes Clean City Program and Can Food Drive. Toyota, Toyota will donate a check for $1,000 to each school. In the name of their Toyota Leadership winner, the Toyota Leadership Award, sponsored by Toyota Motor Sales USA and Toyota's quality line of 1990 cars and trucks. Toyota, a heritage of reliability. Toyota, I love what you do for me. Of course, the score here at halftime, 13-7. Grambling out in front of uh, Alabama A&M, 13-7. Let's check in on some other scores that's happening around uh, black college uh, football today. First of all, let's check in on Texas Southern and Alcorn. Two straight losses for Texas Southern. Alcorn, a big win for them. They beat them 31-26 down at the Bayou. Also, Bethune traveling to Washington, D.C. to take on Howard. Howard remains unbeaten coming away with a 23-7 win in the CIAA, Virginia State and Hampton. We'll see Hampton next week, and Hampton comes out a 7-0 winner 
over Virginia State, while another CIAA matchup had Norfolk State going against the defending CIAA champs, and Norfolk State comes out a winner 27-19, so that sets up a big ball game next week right here on BET next Saturday afternoon down in Hampton between Norfolk and Hampton University. Now, Lim Barney, Doug Williams, they're standing by to talk about some key NFL matchups that'll be taking place around the NFL tomorrow. Doug and Lim? Thank you, Charlie. Well, as, uh, as a custom throughout the rest of the NFL season, both Doug and I will be trying to select the key matchups. We're going into week five of this NFL season, uh, and I want BET to make sure they keep a running tab on this, Doug, because I think I'm going to beat you. <laughs> well, anyway, we got tomorrow's matchup between Tampa Bay and the Dallas Cowboys. Who do you like? I'm going to take Dallas at home. They've been playing pretty decent football. I'm going to take Tampa. <laughs> Green Bay, Chicago, a Central Division rivalry, black and blue. Who do you like? I'm going to take Green Bay. I still think they have some problem at quarterback for Chicago. I'm going to take Chicago. All right, here's, here, here's another Central Division matchup, Detroit Lions and Minnesota Vikings. It's time for Wayne Funds and the run and shoot to get on track. I'm going to take uh, Detroit. I'm going to take Minnesota. <laughs> <laughs> New Orleans Saints and uh, Atlanta Falcons. I think this might be the week Steve Walsh get a chance to play. I'm going to take New Orleans Saints for that defense. Okay, so you're going with uh, Steve Walsh? Well, I'm going to take New Orleans as a defense, and if John don't come through, they're going to hurry and put Steve Walsh in. I like Atlanta Falcons in there. I think... Uh, I think Coach down there is going to get things going for him. He's a rough-riding type of coach, and Granville is my type of coach. He's a hard-nosed coach. I like Glanville. Going into Cincinnati and Los Angeles Rams, who do you like? Well, since they had problems last Monday night up in Seattle, I think it's time for Boomer to get on track. I'm going to take Cincinnati. Yeah, I like Boomer over Los Angeles also. Uh, Boomer is a, a terrific quarterback. Cincinnati's got some high-powered offensive people, and they have the defense to go with it. We're, we're liking that situation. Here's a good one. Los Angeles Raiders against... The Buffalo Bills. I think the Raiders have been relying on defense and rushing the football, and uh, they got to keep people hurt in defense. And Buffalo has a good run defense. I'm taking Buffalo. All right, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go against you in that one. I'm gonna go with the LA Raiders. I like the Raiders in that fact. Good defense, offense can score, and if Ra as straight as Raiders is on tack, they're gonna be good. You say it, straight as Raiders. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's one that'll be right here in the uh, Hoosier Dome on tomorrow: Kansas City Chiefs versus the Indianapolis Coach. I'm taking Leonard Griffin, Albert Lewis, and Steve DeBerg. Okay, then. I'll go with you in that matchup. We both like Kansas City. All right, here we go. Another key matchup. They came off a real good game last week. Miami versus the New York Jets. I'm going to take uh, Dan Marino. He's playing pretty good football. And, and Miami Dolphins are playing pretty good football. Miami's playing real good. I like Miami also. shula has been a terrific coach over the year, and he certainly hasn't lost any efficiency in that department. Another key matchup, the New England Patriots at home against the Seattle Seahawks. Well, don't blame uh, Mark Wilson, but I'm going to take Seattle. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm going to go with Mark Wilson also. He's, he's a tough guy, and I like the... Uh, I'm taking Se Seattle, though. I like Seattle oh, okay. also. I like <laughs> Seattle also. I mean, you know, Mark Wilson's okay, but I like the Seattle Seahawks as well. We got another one hiding back there, don't we? Yes, we do. Oh. Pittsburgh Steelers versus the San Diego Chargers. San Diego has a good defense. Pittsburgh might be in for five weeks of no scoring, no TV. Okay. I'm going to go with San Diego also. Good matchup. Monday night, here's the thriller. Monday night, Cleveland Browns at the Denver Broncos against John Elway. Well, I think you got to go with John Elway with their defense. Bernie Kosar has been sacked an awful lot of times this year. Okay. You're going with uh, the Broncos? I'm going with John. You're going with John Elway. I think he's a terrific athlete as well. I like the, uh, the Denver Broncos as well. I'm going with Denver. Well, we've had our first week's matchup, and uh, it'll be interesting to see how we're going. Uh, I know Doug, uh, Charlie, along with Reggie, had a chance to talk about the New England Patriot, the young lady who was, uh, who was, uh, I guess she was, expo they, they exposed some uh, some personal property to her a couple of weeks ago, Lisa Olson. What do you think about women being in a locker room? Well, you know, my thing about that is the fact that I think the locker room, and I've been in a lot of locker rooms all my life, that, you know, that's one private area that a man have a chance to be a man. Now, I do agree with the fact that if you want to interview somebody, and let's take the men's out, let's take the women out, and put them in an interview room, and whoever they want to talk to, tell somebody, say, I want to talk to whoever they want to. I echo your sentiments, but I think the thing being, had the owner, Kai Yam, had not made the statement he made, I don't think the whole uh, incident would have been blown out of proportion as it's come to. And another thing about that, I'm sure there have been an awful lot of other women that have been in the locker room, and things have been said to them that they'd let it blow over their head. I think sometimes you got to be tough in those situations and not hear some of the things that are said. Okay, Doug. Again, uh, we just brought you the uh, fifth week of NFL matchups. We're going to give it back to Charlie. Chaz? 
much, Doug. Lim, you two can't agree on anything. You figure it's an <laughs> offensive player against a defensive player. Even uh, Lim bet against his old team, Detroit. Oh, we're going to wrap it up here at halftime with our Toyota Sports Line 13 to 7, Grambling. And we'll be back with the second half in a moment. Toyota Halftime Sports Line has been brought to you by your Toyota dealers. Toyota, I love what you do for me. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, you've missed an exciting first half of play, grambling with a 13-7 advantage in this fall game, the 7th Annual Circle City Classic. And of course, in order to make such a game possible, you have to have corporate sponsors. And joining me right now is Eugene McCullens, the Director of Community Affairs for Coca-Cola USA. And Eugene, why did Coca-Cola get involved in such a classic? Well, Charlie, this is a positive event for the black community. As you know, this is the largest event in this dome. And in fact, we are proud to be a part of it because it does so much for the black community. One, it provides uh, scholarships to uh, minority kids to attend school, and it supports the historically black colleges who uh, produce so much for the community, not just the black community, but for the community at large. Now, I understand you've been involved not only in this event from its inception, but also in the Bayou Classic over the last few years. That's exactly right. This is the second largest uh, sporting event for the black community, and the Bayou Classic is the largest. That will be held this year in uh, New Orleans during the Thanksgiving weekend, Saturday following Thanksgiving. And certainly I want to tell all of our fans and all of your fans out there to come down to New Orleans, support the Bayou Classic, support black college sports. Thank you, Gene, and back up to you, Charlie. All right, thank you very much. And Gene McCullers and Coca-Cola USA, a big part and the major sponsor of the Coca-Cola Circle City Classic. Let's check out the first half stats as Cleveland Smith ran the second half kickoff back. Grambling will start at their own 29-yard line, and you see the stats there. Passing yards favor the Tigers of Grambling, and rushing yards favor Alabama A&M. On the counter play back inside, they keep it on the ground. That is, Grambling does. Tyrone Davis on the carry out to the 35-yard line, a gain of six yards on the play. Get a chance to see it again. It's that old counter trade play almost. Two guards out front, tight end pulling as well. Baby, if I can change my mind, Tyrone Davis gets five yards on the carry. Bring up second down. Let's make it six. Second down and four. At the 35 yard line. Straight ahead, they hand off to Dean, and Dean is stymied. In fact, loses maybe a yard. Dean only 31 yards in the first half on 15 carries, so his five-yard per carry average was strictly stymied there, while Tracy Kendall had two long runs, 44 and a 43-yarder, and uh, there it is. But he had 10 carries, so you, you got to count those sacks in there, too. <laughs> Reed uh, on the receiving end for Groundling, five receptions, 121 yards to Jake Reed, the wing back pass and it's complete out in the flat this is Andrew Andrew Glover the senior split in from Gonzales Louisiana he picks up the first down across the 40 to the 41 and there's the defensive leaders and tackles Jenkins for Grambling the linebacker with seven tackles and this yard line keep the ball on the ground no game back we are experiencing technical difficulties please stand by Tackling executions in which they have. It's 12 40 left third quarter. Third and three. Grambling. Smithfield still on his feet and down inside.
interceptions. And they've gone to him quite often. We are experiencing technical difficulties. Please stand by. 29-yard line. Here's Burris throwing it long. Oh, we should have had a flag down the field. Yeah, well, like the receiver defense. to Dean, right side, cuts it back inside, and that four yard side. We are experiencing technical difficulties. Please stand by. Time out by Grambling, and before we go anywhere, let's go down to Charles K., who has some famous people with him right now. Let's go down to Charles. Charles? Well, we can't hear him. Well, it's wonderful. The people of Indianapolis is very, very warm, and we enjoyed the hospitality today. Of course, we enjoyed hearing from you yesterday on Video Soul, and what is coming up next for Guy? Uh, well, our album will be out November 13th. It's called The Future. Uh, we got 16 songs on the album. We're about to do our video this Wednesday and Thursday in Los Angeles. It's called Want to Get With You. And what is your thoughts about the game? Oh, well, I, you know, Gremlin started off real, real slow, but I was up there in the booth, and, and we was, like, joking and stuff, and I knew that Gremlin was going to come back in the uh, feet. And, uh, so far, they're looking pretty well, and let's go back upstairs to Charlie, Lim, and Doug. You know, I don't sing. They yeah. shouldn't predict football games, should they? Right. It ain't over yet. It ain't over yet. <laughs> it ain't over, but he must have went to Gremlin. <laughs> Apparently, didn't he? Or at least close. Or <laughs> well, somebody paid him well. <laughs> Best guy. Uh, they performed a part of the Video Soul Show on BET Live from the Convention Center here in Indianapolis last night. And, oh, they had a lot of people out there. Body and Kwame and these people I've never even heard of, but they, they did a whale of a job. I almost cut a step, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the sacks. Each team coming up with three. Third and long. Steps up, throws, complete to Grant. Grant close to, but short of, a first down by about five yards. Good job here by Gramlin with the uh, offensive tactics here. Ends of crossing, end over. Grant, the uh, primary receiver. Get a chance to see it again. Nice soft touch here by Sean Boris. As Grant comes from the left side, all the way over to the right side. Coming up with the stop number 21 defensively. Roger Isaac. Isaac. And that was a fourth, third down, 22. They're going for it on fourth and three. They picked up 19. Let's see what they come up with at the 37-yard line. Nothing. A sack. 
And the big sack by number 90 for Frank Brown. the uh, Bulldogs defense. Bulldog, yep. Frank Brown, the senior out of Brighton, Alabama, second leading tackler in the conference a year ago, and that is his first sack of the day. He came in as the leading tackler on this team. Charlton, he's not hasn't lost in any efficiency. He is breaking through virtually untouched by human hands to make the stop on Sean Bars. But what I was about to say, that's the fifth time they've gone for fourth down. They're showing Alabama AM. They're like Rodney Dangerfield. No respect. <laughs> first and ten at their own 45. Alabama AM keeping it on the ground, trying to bounce outside and doing it is Reginald Leslie. Junior from Huntsville, Alabama's Johnson High. So probably the biggest gainer from a running back of Alabama A&M that we've seen today. Well, I think they're trying to build that confidence that they can run the football to open things up for Kendall because he hadn't been that efficient uh, the last quarter or so. So I think what they're trying to do is, is get their running game to go on so they can open it up for him. Second down and three after the gain of seven. And they keep it on the ground, and it's close to a first it down is. for Reginald Leslie. They may have it. Fine individual effort by that young man. Kept those knees churning. Shoulders parallel to the line of scrimmage. There's a season outburst so far. Averaging just over four yards a carry. They've only scored six touchdowns on the ground, Alabama and them. Twelve of them have come through the air. Good determination here. Slips one tackle, keep those knees pumping, and I don't know. They're not, they haven't brought the chains out, but from here it looks like it's a first down. I would say so. <laughs> but they're... Uh, what does official need? A microscope? Look at him. He keeps looking. They're coming out with the chains now. That's a first down, mister. <laughs> Oh, no, you can't count these officials out. <laughs> <laughs> no question. What do you call that ball that's on the five-yard line? On the you punt? see that half the score, uh, Alcorn? Yeah, beat oh, uh, Texas Southern. That's surprising. Their second loss in a row, isn't it? That's surprising because Alcorn really hasn't been playing that well. They well, certainly haven't. Congratulations, Coach Theo. In fact, Alcorn will be playing in this Circle City Classic next year against Howard University. Who's undefeated. Right now with a big win over Bethune-Cookman. Howard is undefeated, let's say that. <laughs> we just talked about both Hall, Hall Court and Howard playing in that game. And you said, who's undefeated? Yeah, Howard is undefeated. Great job, Steve. First Steve Wilson. And, first and 10 at the 46-yard line. They keep it on the ground again with Leslie turning the corner. Just got tripped up as he turned the corner by Wendell Keller, number 25. His third run consecutively. And there's no question about the running game will open up the passing game and vice versa. Are you surprised that they're running the ball like this, though? No, I'm not, because I think uh, the reason why they're doing it, Tracy hadn't had in the last quarter and a half a good football. He hadn't been able to complete in the past. And I think Are you surprised at the success they're having? Yes, I am. I mean, Grambling defense has been playing good against the rush. It is second down and four. Option left. Leslie. Back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. Then third and four. Fine job defensively. Good force, good field, good containment. Everybody had their men. Quarterback was stymied by the linebacker. Defensive end had the running back. Pitch was made. Safety came up, made the stop. Good job. Terrence Cooper checks back in, as does Pat Lee. Everybody's accounted for a man on that option. Well, they've had Robert Roberts, Rogers and Anthony Walker both in the lineup. So you had virtually two tight ends. Now it's an obvious passing situation. I would think they're going to put it with one lone setback in Terrence Cooper. Third and four. Maybe a sprint out type of play. Sprints left. Looking. Out. And it's complete yes. to the far sideline by to Anthony Thomas for a first down inside the 30 to the 29. You know, all day this kid has been open on his routes. He runs very different routes. There's no question about his athletic ability. But again, as Doug mentioned, Quarterback Tracy Kendall's had a bad quarter and a half, but now he seems to be on target. Good job. Both feet inbound. You only need one in college. Outstanding routes. Good first down reception there by wide receiver Anthony Thomas. First and 10. Alabama A&M at the 29-yard line of Grambling. They started this drive at their own 45-yard line. Kendall stands in there, throws, has a complete once again on the out pattern to Anthony Thomas. Charles McNeil is down on the sideline with a former Grambling great defensive back, now a member of the Kansas City Chiefs 
They call him Snow, Albert Lewis. Let's go down to Charles K. right now. Thank you very much. Joining me is Albert Lewis. And Albert, what are your thoughts of the game thus far, being a Grambling alumnus? Well, I've been uh, really pleased with the game. Uh, I got to tell you this. Uh, it must be faith. I must be living right. This is the first time I've had an opportunity to see Grambling play since I left back in 1983. And it happens to happen on my birthday. I mean, I couldn't ask for a better day. Happy birthday from the entire BET Sports staff. Well, um, joining us, of course, is the great one, Doug Williams, back up in the booth. And when you think in terms of Doug being also a Grambling great star, do you have any special words for him? Uh, well, yeah, I think Doug was, uh, he is still one of the best quarterbacks in the, in the game of football. I like to see him back in the league, uh, preferably in a different division. Well, best of luck to you tomorrow in the big game against the Indianapolis Colts. Uh, thank you. Uh, hey, Charlie. What did he say? What? In, a different, in a different division. They don't want him in the AFC with him. Right? Uh -oh. hey, Charlie, He's a defensive back. Wasn't Lewis a, a part of that Mansfield Mafia? He sure was, certainly was. Mansfield, Louisiana. Yes. We, back in 83, we saw him play many times on BET. Indeed. Now leading the league in punt blocks in the NFL right now. He sat out and has come back and blocked three punts. He didn't even play the first week of the regular season. Wait, when you're from Grambling, you can do things like that, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> we want to see You're you not prejudiced, are you? No, I'm not. <laughs> Let's hold him so he don't jump out the boot, Chad. <laughs> that was a second down play for Alabama A&M. They lost yards back to the 16-yard line. But again, they are in field goal range, although they would still be trailing by three if they're able to kick it. So let's see what they come out with on third and eight. Kendall rolls right, has time, throws. Touchdown! No, nope, they say, well, one official said he went out at the one, and the other official signaled touchdown. But it's complete to Anthony Thomas. Well, I tell you what, these officials have had some... Uh... Cass Pennington signaled that he's out at the one. That's the official there. Yeah, these officials have 14 had some... 14 yards. Uh, had some, uh, some mis mis misgivings here. Look at the gamble by the defensive back. On penalty against Alabama. It's a good call. a and He stepped out right there. It's a tight roper. Tell you what. It was close. Horseshoes, hand grenades, and slow dancing. What was your axiom, Doug? Uh, billionaires. Did we say that? Yeah, billionaires. Okay. Yeah, that's awfully tight, Charlie. I hope the coach doesn't run out there and get a sports like again. <laughs> it is first and goal, Alabama AM. At the one yard line of Grambling. They have a chance to tie the game, and an extra point would put them ahead by one. This would culminate a 55-yard drive. Straight ahead. Yes. Touchdown. Reginald Leslie, Alabama a &M, and it's tied at 13. Leslie with his second rushing touchdown of the year. This one from one yard out. And a fine engineered drive that they mixed up the run and the pass and took them down the field. Like I said earlier, they ran the football and they gained confidence and they gave Trent, uh, Tracy Kim the opportunity to do the things that he can do best, spread out and throw the football. No good. The extra point. Oh. No ball good. Game. And it's tied at 13. Timeout on the field. 524 remaining. Third quarter. We have a tie. There's only been one tie in previous Circle City Classic games, and that was a 10-10 some years back. Jackson State, Tennessee State. Certainly was. No, Florida and m Jackson State. Okay. This Bud's for you. And by Pizza Hut, home of pan pizza that's winning the hearts of America. Pizza Hut, making it great. Somebody almost missed the delivery on that pizza, didn't they? <laughs> 524 remaining. If you don't have it in 30 minutes, you get it free anyway. <laughs> I know. I was talking to a buddy of mine who was a police officer who stopped one of those pizza guys for speeding, <laughs> caught him in radar, and he said, I got to deliver this in 30 minutes. He said, you won't Not get it today. <laughs> <laughs> free pizza. Grambling on the kickoff return. Out to the 25-yard line, Tyrone Davis, the man running it back. We're all tied at 13 in the third quarter. Grambling in Alabama A&M. Hey, we got a good football game here, Charlie. Well, Alabama A&M, in case you're just joining us, took a 7-0 lead on a 
43-yard run as you look at the last scoring drive that ate up 56 yards, 10 plays, four minutes off the clock, and Leslie with a one-yard run. PAT was mixed, missed. Kendall, a 43-yard run. Burris, a 55, 53-yard pass to Reed, made it 7-6. Then Grambling took the lead 13-7 on a Dean one-yard run, and then Leslie's one-yard run moments ago tied it at 13. They run it right to Ned. Ned, all yards, and that's it. Fine defense played by the left side. There's a young man who's been in a lot of action all day, number 36, Cleveland Crothers. You know what, Lem, and you Crutcher. talk about that left side. We were talking earlier about the world, Raymond Smith <laughs> being over there blocking, and this kid, Bruce Craig, has played a well of a game against the world today. Indeed, number 96 yeah. at that defensive tackle spot. They have played great rushing defense today. Graham they certainly has. Hasn't been able to do the things they've been doing all year, uh, picking up yards on the ground. What would your strategy be in a situation like this? Is a second down and 10? I mean, and just what's happening as far as your defense, the adjustments you would have to make against the defense that Alabama and Emma's play. We'll talk about that after this play. Whoa, what a hit. That's as good as a sack. Because yeah, I'll tell you, it caused the quarterback to really pay the price. But go back to what I was talking about, Doug. Well, I, I think I would have to open it up. But then again, you've got to think about the fact that Sean Burrs really hadn't thrown the football like he's capable of throwing today. So I think Coach Robinson is a little conservative on the sideline. They don't want to take a chance of turnover as far as the interception. And you see what happened there. No blocking on the backside. He really paid for it. Todd Willard, another sack for him. Sack master. And not really a sack. It's an oh. incomplete pass, but that's as good as a sack. I'll tell you. you know why? You would rather have a sack, wouldn't you? You, <laughs> you put it in the quarterback mind and let you know that I'm coming back. <laughs> yeah, he would much rather have a sack, Charlie, to go to his overall statistics. He rolls away now. Sacked again. This time, number 96, Bruce Craig, the young man we just spoke of, playing against World Smith. Well, I think Craig might be a look quicker than the world today. Yeah, he's out quick to World. Yeah. Coach yeah. World is 300 plus. He's a space shuttle going around the world today, isn't he? <laughs> Small world. <laughs> Here he is coming in from the uh, left side defensively and is flinging him to the ground. Uh, that hurts. And they lose yards. That drive started at their own 25. You can see him. He's quick, too. He gets off the ball almost as quick as the offense. You punt from their own 20. Right, high snap, pulls it down, gets it away. Fair catch call and made for by Maurice Houston at the 39-yard line. Alabama and m after a 41-yard punt, will go to work. First down and 10 when we come back. It's all tied at 13. $45,580 bucks for a buck. Charlie Neal, Lim Barney, Doug Williams. We're in Indianapolis, Indiana for the seventh annual Coca-Cola Circle City Classic. Nap town. Glad you could be with us. We have a good one. 331 left third quarter. All tied at 13. Alabama A&M with the ball. First and 10 at their own 39-yard line. Maurice Houston goes far to the left side. And Anthony Thomas is far to the right. They shift out with Reginald Leslie. One lone setback. They give to Leslie. He is met I don't by think three. Leslie wanted them. <laughs> Grambling defenders. And it was led by that man, number 82. For the Grambling Tigers. Missed blocking up front, but again, good penetration defense will uh, off stalemate. All kind of good blocking. Again, the tight end and the, and, and the pattern end, number seven. Anthony Walker was just driven back into the back, and as a result, Mark Johnson came up with a big hit. A one yard loss. Second and 11. Kendall, back to pass, quick pass, incomplete. He had to throw it quickly because, again, number 82, Mark Johnson, was coming. Grambling defense has to rise to this occasion. I think if, if Alabama m, m could establish a drive and put some points on the board, it could be a, a detriment to Grambling momentum. I don't know what happened over on the sideline with number 82, Mark Johnson. Obviously, they didn't give me any water. He's playing like he's thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> For a quarterback, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Third and 11. Coming to the near side is Pat Lee. Uh -oh. On the inside counter. Oh, if he could have maintained his tail. One finger got, and that was Darryl Milburn Ooh. that tripped up. Saved him. Anthony Thomas, because he would have been off the race. He, he was gone. He was gone. Fine execution of blocking in the middle there. Point of attack. 
misdirection. This will offset a good penetrating defense. There it is. It's all set up. 83 just got his hand on it. Yes, he did. Young man who was blocking the tackle didn't sustain his block long enough. Had he sustained his block long enough, young man would have been off to the racing. They got the wave going here as Alabama A&M will punt it away with Paul. Will he, will he block. Pass? Block. He can run it. Oh. They can't pick it up. <laughs> They've been closed all day long. They certainly have. One of the first turnovers in the ball game. 208 remaining. It could be a big one here, but Grambling has to cash in on it. Fine field position for the Tigers of Grambling State University. 208 remaining third quarter. We'll be back. Maybe the first big break of the game for Grambling. First turnover anyway. Here he is up the middle. Wasn't blocked. He was pushed in the back. Travis Dixon blocks it. And watch what happened to number three. Derek McFarren. He doesn't know it's blocked. Yeah, didn't keep his head on a swivel. Now he tries to get in there and end up hurting his arm. Back to live action. Chaz. And Barris throws. Incomplete. Intended for Franklin Thomas. And the quarterback, Burris, paid the price. Harvey Clayton, number 48, strong safety, depending on the play. That's a tough throw. He rolled to the short side of the field and really didn't have any real estate as far as getting that ball in there at a, at a great position. It is second down and 10 for the Grambling Tigers. Short drop, throws, batted in the air, incomplete. Charles Kay on the sideline with Derek Thomas. Let's go down to him right now. Very much, Charlie. It's a pleasure to have the All-Pro along my side. And, of course, Derek, when you think in terms of Alabama A&M, you went to the Crimson Tide of Alabama. Did you ever have any thoughts of going up north? Well, I visited up north. I went to the homecomings. They came down to, we have a spring party every spring, and they, I, I had a chance to meet all the guys when they came down then, but I never thought about going to a &M. Of course, this game tomorrow is a big game for the Kansas City Chiefs. What are your thoughts about going up against Jack Trudeau and in the Indianapolis Colts? Well, it's, it's going to be a good game, but uh, I think we're going we're gonna to win it in grand fashion. You don't have to be cocky or arrogant or anything, but we prepared really hard, and they hadn't been playing really well to this point. So I think we're going to take the game. Prediction on this game? Prediction on this game. Well, being that I'm a, a hometown, well, not hometown, I guess I was somewhat made into an Alabama boy, so I guess I got to go with Alabama on this one. Thanks a lot, Derek. All right. All right, thank you very much. And while that last play was an 18-yard completion to Stephen Grant, Move the ball inside the 20 to the 19, and that's where Grambling will have it. First down and 10 at the 19 of Alabama A&M. Here's Ned turning the corner, trying to go right, nothing doing as he is brought down by Jimmy Perkins, Jr. out of Belle Glade, Florida. I really don't think we can say enough for Alabama A&M uh, rushing defense today because they have really shut Grambling out. They he's have. done a good job on the pass, though. When he's had time to pass, he's been able to get to his receivers like that 18 yard of the Grant, but you see Perkins coming up and fine stuffing technique, that one. Fine technique, Charlie. He took on the lead blocker, shedded the lead blocker, and then came upfield and made a tackle for a loss of a yard. Second and 11. Grambling. Those are one on one. Only his second reception of the year. Holding. This is a touchdown, but a flag is down. Holding against Grambling. Flag is down. Hold everything. Holding against Grambling. I tell you, Alabama AM was in a blitz, an all-out blitz, which, which forces the deployment of man-to-man -man coverage. Number 21, Roderick Isaac had the responsibilities of covering Derek Ned. Ned went up with a great vertical leap to come down with the ball in the end zone for an apparent score, but let's wait to hear what the officials call this. The flag is down in the vicinity of holding. Let's see. Straight drop back. Maybe on number 68 there. Looked like it might have been on Levinsky Davis. And good good play by the receiver, Derek bad, Ned. Bad techniques on uh, Isaac. Roderick Isaac. I mean, he had his back turned, didn't locate the ball at all. He was, a he was like a lost ball in high weeds. Well, if it's holding, I don't know why it's taking so long. I don't think it's holding. 
Must be something more than that. Look like a touchdown is indicated by Sean Boris. He's running off the field. Yeah, Alabama and M a little disappointing. Look at 68. That's a takedown there, yeah. folks. That's that's war wrestling. <laughs> we had a dead ball foul. Personal foul. Number 64 of the white team. After the touchdown. It was after the touchdown, touchdown that occurred. Good. We're penalized on the extra point. Raymond Smith was the Ooh. man who the personal foul oh. <laughs> was called it's, it's on tough. number 64. <laughs> the officiating has been really tough in this game. You know the thing about that, you get penalized on the extra point, point yeah. so you get pushed back. Yeah. <laughs> so for Burris, his 10th. Yeah. It happened one time between the